remember it. It was like my name since before, before, since forever. You probably heard about it. You probably hear about it since forever. And it'll keep going. Where people you talk good, people talk bad, but in Jiu-Jitsu world, I know my stuff. I would like to think jiu-jitsu is for everybody. And if you love jiu-jitsu, it'll love you back. I always say that. You know, if you love something, it'll love you back. My name is Pete the Greek Letzos. I've been training jiu-jitsu since a teenager. So I'm at my cousin's house, I remember it like yesterday, and we're over there for something. They like to break dance and do all types of stuff. And then they watch like their, their ninja movies. Like, oh, we're all gonna watch it. I'll like, be a character in the movie. I'm like, what are they watching? I watch a movie on Revenge of the Ninja. And um, that movie became like my favorite movie ever. Then I just started playing sports because you really couldn't be a ninja growing up, you know. I never got the uniform, I wanted it. I'd see it in all like Asian world of martial arts magazines. I'd want to order my ninja cape or whatever it was, but I just never did. I started playing regular sports, uh, played pretty much all the sports. My dad, um, we own hot dog plays in Chicago over here. We're famous for hot dogs and um, we had everything, hot dog, gyros. I was so bored in there, I'd be playing in there. That was like, after school, I'd go to, go to the hot dog stand, and I'd go to karate. But karate was only fun to break the boards. After I broke the first couple boards, it wasn't fun, so I wouldn't show up to the next belt promotion. I'd break the boards. I want the next belt, and they yell at me and stuff. I'm like, hey, my cousins are black belts, like nine years old. Well, I start training with my friends a little bit, grappling, right when we saw the UFC. And then my other friends are wrestlers, so I'd wrestle with them but I wasn't on a wrestling team. And then at 16 years old, Carlson Gracie Jr. moved to Chicago. I know I wasn't yet driving, but I'd take my mom's car anyways. I'd go to jiu-jitsu. Well, and Carlson Gracie Jr. became my best friend. I'd hear stories about him. The thing about Carlson was there wasn't any footage on him pretty much anywhere. And so you just have to imagine this guy. Like, like the way we hear about, oh, Carlson can do this, it was just imagining a perfect fighter, a perfect grappler, perfect striker, everything perfect. One thing about me was I'm from Chicago. I moved all the way to Rio de Janeiro. Well, I started Jiu Jitsu before. I've traveled all over just for Jiu Jitsu. If it wasn't for Jiu Jitsu, I'd be in this little town still, just doing the same old thing that, that everyone does here. Oswaldo Alves is um, one of my friends in Brazil. He's an older black belt. I think he's around like 85 years old. And his school in Brazil at the time, a small school, he took the, the best guys in. So it was like four or five of us, and we lived in there. We won every single tournament, and uh, he trained us pretty hard. Trained Andre Gaval, Jacare, Fredson. You know, these guys were training very hard, and uh, the style was, um, he's like, as well as a Japanese style, he has a lot of videos from Japan, like old videos that show a lot of cool movements. And Oswaldo was the Gracie's judo coach. Oswaldo, we'd, we'd wake up at 6 a.m., we'd meet at the beach, we'd do our run, 15 minute warm up, then we have to carry each other on our back. And he would just make our bodies tired to get resistance, because like I was saying, it was that resistance. Oswaldo, a very dedicated teacher. Probably the most, one of the most, and he does the wrist locks, that's where we all learn wrist locks from. And, and that's, I do wrist locks, I think in the United States, no one really saw those till I started doing them. I feel Carlson around me all the time, all my friends. So like, that's, that's a cool thing. Because maybe they pass, but maybe they're, maybe they're invisible, who knows? You know, Hickson says invisible jujitsu. I was always creative on how I learned because like I said, I'm from here. I'll go train places, live places, but a lot of times I'd be stuck by myself. And it's like the no retreat, no surrender. You just, you just figure it out. Someone gets wrist locked, my name gets gets brought up in the United States for sure. Like if someone gets wrist locked, hey, Pete the Greek, I'm like, yeah, what's up? Like, I'll walk down the street, like, in California, I'll, I could walk down the street within 30 seconds. People are like, hey, Pete the Greek, wrist locked the world. And they'll pick me up, so you need to ride somewhere, anywhere I'm at in California. And so hopefully wrist locked the world, I'll get into some stores and, and get it to, I just, 
I don't know, it's pretty cool. Then when I master another move, it'll be something else. But um, for now, it's not that I'm the only one that wrist locks, but I know a lot of them because I've been doing them since like 2002. One thing I learned was like you could tell someone how strong they are by, by their wrist grip strength. So it's by them, here, grab my wrist as hard as you can. You can feel how strong they are. The wrist lock's always gonna be in the Kimura trap system. Even if it's he's defending it. Sometimes I have him in one of these. Put me in one Kimura trap, like, yeah, right here. So yeah, sometimes I'm over here and I might be able to, to, to wrist lock him. Not gonna be so easy. Most people don't know how to defend them. A wrist lock breaks a frame. When people are making frames, they're making a wedge, you know, the, most people effectively trying to push their arm across. Okay? But if the arm is strong, you're gonna be able to bring it across and the frame is gonna be there. So you have a chance to catch the wrist. So like, wrists are like the end of a wedge. If you hear people speak about how wedges are so important in creating leverage, well at the end of the wedge, there's a wrist, unless like maybe you're gonna make your wedges like this, but most people are pushing right here and they get wrist locked. They get wrist locked. When they're defending their arms, they get wrist locked. But once you catch them a couple of times, it's not gonna be so easy. It's a, it's kind of a trick move. It's a trick move. So it's something where you can just trick someone and catch them, it's just like a heel hook. Jiu-Jitsu is the ultimate check and balance for someone's life. If you get the Jiu-Jitsu fever, I think it stays with you forever. But it's something that's addicting. You can't explain, like, what's the typical Jiu-Jitsu person? They come in all shapes and sizes. What's, what, do they gotta be flexible? No, do they, there's, there's moves for everybody. The fact is, you only gotta know about five or six moves. And, and that's about it. And you become good at them. I guarantee you, if you love jiu-jitsu a lot, you study it, you show up to class, you do the best you can, you're gonna get good. It's learning a language. If you wanna learn a language, like jiu-jitsu is a universal language, a body language. So if you wanna learn any language, it's gonna take at least a couple years. You gotta learn how to use your body again. So that's why jiu-jitsu is cool. You can join it in your 30s or 40s and still be a badass at it. That's, you're getting the cliff notes and I have students 70 years old and they roll, no problem. The golden rule is when, when you're grappling with people, you can feel them out a lot better than just talking to them. And yeah, spiritual, it's super important. I think a lot of the guys are spiritual, but you meet a lot of people that have no spiritualism whatsoever at all. And they're good too. So there is no profile, there is no religion. There is, there is no political, there is no race that dominates jiu-jitsu. Like they're, they're all gonna have, every one of them are gonna have badasses in jiu-jitsu eventually. The people that do the jiu-jitsu are not perfect. The techniques are perfect. The triangle choke is perfect. Not the person doing it. That triangle choke's been around forever. They just learned a perfect technique. So like someone come join the class and they're a lawyer and they're learning more about leverage and stuff from jiu-jitsu, they're gonna be able to put that in their life. And whatever, whatever profession you're in, you don't need to quit your job in jiu-jitsu. I don't recommend that for anyone. I just kind of fell into it. No matter what you do, filmmaker, anything, jiu-jitsu is gonna help you be more creative. It's gonna help you look outside the box. And that's why I think it's just cool. That's why it develops a subculture. By the time I was 19 years old, I probably knew multiple people in every type of industry that there is all across the world. Just because when you train with someone, they become your buddy. At my school, I pretty much teach everyone, but the thing is your body's gonna be tired and you have to almost become addicted to your body feeling like that. And if you could like, if you could go home at night and, and feel good about yourself and wake up in the morning a little bit sore and ready to go the next day, that's great. And I think people get addicted to that feeling. But with jujitsu, a lot of people, they're at the age when, they're, when they quit most sports, 
maybe 22, 23, 24, 25. And they get in jiu-jitsu at that time, and it, it pretty much continues where other sports leave off. And just like where other martial arts leave off, jiu-jitsu begins. It's efficiency and it's cool. You're using the floor as like your main tool. So the floor is really strong. So it's not only you're going against the person, you're using the floor against them to wrap them up. And I think jiu-jitsu is about being positive as well. I'm not trying to player hate on anyone. I just want to have fun with it. With the jiu-jitsu, it makes them all, all friends. You have hundreds of people in one room or in one gym, it would never be friends. I mean, you have people at my gym that are neighbors. They've never talked to each other. Hey, I see you pulling out your trash every day. Never talked to them. Now they're in jiu-jitsu, they're best friends. Jiu-jitsu is the ultimate check and balance for someone's life, if, if that's what they like. I mean, there's plenty of things out there. The world's a marvelous place. But if you get the jiu-jitsu fever, I think it stays with you forever. And it can even pass on to your children. You know, jiu-jitsu fever is, you can't really explain it. When they catch it, they might lose it, but most likely they'll never lose it. And other people that don't have it will never understand that. They'll never understand, oh, why does he like doing this? Why does it, because they don't have the fever. And I would like to think jiu-jitsu is for everybody. You can't just train tough, you have to train smart. When you're training all day, like I always train all day since forever. You gotta know how to train. You can't just burn yourself out. Don't let all the easy stuff out there let you get lazy because you gotta be in shape, you gotta be flexible, and you have to eat well. That's the good thing about Jiu Jitsu is always keeping a nice check and balance on your life. You know, if you think you're gonna stay out all night and not sleep, well try and do that, that's easy. But do that and then go to practice and train hard. Now it's gonna be hard, now you're gonna wanna sleep. So. It's, it's just something that's gonna keep going. And I'm glad to be a trailblazer in it. And anytime I want to do some jiu-jitsu, people always told me, oh, Pete, you're crazy, you can't do that. And I'm like, perfect. Because that's what it takes. And even the stuff I'm doing now, people are, oh, why are you doing that? You know, my gym burned down, I have a lot of problems. Oh, why don't you get another job, do something else? No way, because I believe in the power of jiu-jitsu. And it helps people out, help me out. And maybe not in, in one little town it's big, but if you look around the world, you're gonna see a, a lot of jiu-jitsu everywhere. Sometimes I get a little depressed and I think what would life be without jiu-jitsu? I start thinking about money and thinking about all my friends. And I just remember, they just got big loans. They got bigger loans than me. You know, I'm, I'm happy for what I do. It's just hard work and dedication. And if, if you work hard and you're dedicated, you'll be remembered. You know, I think my name will be around for a while. For sure it will be. Just outwork, outwork everyone. That's a simple trick is, is outwork people. That's it. You want to be good at something, outwork them.